Good evening everyone, welcome to my second episode on astrophotography. In this episode we're going to talk about how to capture star trails. Let's roll the intro and get right into it. For those who don't know me yet, I'm Loic Belmont Halford, a young photographer and filmmaker on the journey to become better at this art. The first episode of this series was on capturing sharp stars, including the Milky Way. The next episode is going to talk about how to capture time lapses. And the last one is going to teach you how to use your mobile devices like your cell phone and the DJI Osmo Pockets to capture the stars. Be sure to subscribe below if you want to learn more about capturing the stars and astrophotography. Like I explained in my last video, there's actually a few things you need to check before going out and taking pictures of the stars. The first one is that you have a clear sky and here you can use your normal weather app to check that there's no clouds. So this is good for tonight. The second thing is that the moon isn't there because without the moon, you're going to see the star better. And the third one is that you need a dark sky. Uh, you cannot take pictures in the middle of the city because there's too much light pollution. If you want to learn more about these three things, you can watch my last video. There's a link in down below because I go in more depth to explain why these are important. Okay, so now that we're at the location and we have a nice bright sky, let's talk about how to frame your shot. For this, we're going to use the app that I talked about before, Photo Peels, that's going to allow us to position the camera in the right direction. What we're looking for when using the AR mode is for the North Star. And this is because the stars are going to be turning around that star and creating circles all around it. And this is probably the most common picture when taking star trails. The other thing that's pretty common is turning a 360 degrees to the other side and taking half circles of the stars in the sky. Now let's quickly talk about the camera gear I'm going to be using. So here I have my full frame camera a 60 Mark II with my 16 to 35 f2.8 lens. And these are both great because they're going to allow to have a lot of light that's going to come in inside of the camera. And it's also a really wide lens which is going to allow us to have more stars inside of the shot. Then there's a tripod and this is super important because we're using two techniques tonight to take uh, star trails and they're both going to be using long exposures. So you really need a good tripod to be sure the camera doesn't move at all during the shots. Then there's another piece of gear I didn't talk about in the last video and this is an intervalometer. And this is very useful because most cameras have an internal limit of about 30 seconds when taking a shot. So you can use this to take longer exposures. And we're going to see in a few minutes, it's actually going to be really useful for us tonight. Now let's talk about the first technique to take star trails. And this one is to do everything inside of the camera. And this is really great because you don't need to use anything uh, other than your camera to get this type of shot. An intervalometer here is still very useful because we'll be using a one hour exposure to take the shot. So we want to be sure that we have something that allows us to take such a long exposure. In this first shot, we want to test if the stars are sharp and if the composition works well. So we're going to be using exactly the same settings I talked about in my previous video on getting sharp stars. So we're going to have a 15 second sh shutter, we're going to have f2.8 aperture, and we're going to have an ISO of about 2000 to 3000 uh, to be sure we can see enough inside of the shot. So now let's take this shot and also make sure that we have our focus on manual and focus to infinity so that the stars are sharp. So now let's take that shot and see what it gives. Now that we know that the stars are sharp and the composition is working, we're actually going to change our mode to take a longer shutter speed. And for this, we're going to go in ball mode on the camera. And this is really important because this is what going to allow the intervalometer to control the shutter speed instead of having the camera controlling it. So once we're in ball mode, we're actually going to also need to change the ISO because we were at 3200 before. Now we're going to bring this down to about, I would say, 800 ISO, just to be sure we don't get too much light inside of the shot when taking a 15 minute shutter speed. And we're taking now a 15 sh minute shutter speed, not a one hour one, because we want to be sure that the North Star is dead centered inside of the shot and that the composition is still working. And I prefer filling when taking a 15 minute shot than filling when taking a one hour shot. So let's go and take this one. So we're just going to set up the intervalometer here for 15 minutes and press the button and we should be good to go to take the 15 minute test shot. 
now that we know that our composition is working and that our North Star is nice and centered inside of the shot, we're actually ready to take our one hour shutter speed uh, shot. And for this, we need to change one setting on the camera. So because we're going from 15 minutes to one hour for the shutter speed, we're gonna bring the ISO from 800 down to 200. So this is important to be sure we don't have stars that are completely overblown and that we still have nice details inside of them. So we're gonna make this change on the camera and now we're ready um, to set uh, the intervalometer to a one hour shutter speed and to start taking the shot. So let's do it right now. just realized I actually forgot something super, super important for the shot. And it's that you shouldn't leave your f-stop the same when you're taking the one hour shot because it's such a long exposure that there's so much light that's coming in that if you leave it at f2.8, it's gonna be completely overblown. So I'm just gonna bring it up to like f8 or maybe even f11. So I'm gonna put the settings down below to let you know what are the final settings I used. Now let's talk about the second technique to get star trails. Instead of taking a really long exposure inside of the camera, we're actually gonna take a lot of smaller ones and stack them all together with the computer afterwards. So for this one, we wanna get sharp stars. And I talked about the, in the last video how to get sharp stars. So we're gonna be using a 15 second shutter, F2 pointed aperture, and I also have about 2000 uh, depending on your camera. So we're gonna set all of this up, but we're still gonna be using the intervalometer because we wanna get exactly 240 pictures. So why 240 pictures? that's because we're going to be using a 15 second sh shutter speed and that means four pictures per minute and we have 60 minutes in an hour so 240 pictures in the end so let's set everything up and start taking the pictures and see the result uh, afterwards While the camera is finishing taking the shots, let's talk about the pros and cons of each techniques. So taking a star trail inside of the camera actually has a few pros in my opinion. The first one is that it's a little bit easier to understand because you don't need to use any post-processing software. So it's actually a little bit easier when you're starting out and you're not sure what to do. The second thing is that the file size is actually a lot smaller because you're only taking one exposure so you don't need to have all these files at the end which means you're going to get one raw file which is about 30 megabytes in my case with my Canon DSLR instead of getting 240 pictures which is a lot more data. Then there's also there's more visibility in the foreground because you're taking a really long exposure. You can get a lot more details inside of your foreground so if your foreground is important in your shot that's a good thing to keep in mind. Now let's move on to what's good and bad about the photo stack technique for taking star trails. And the first thing I like about this technique is that it's a little bit easier to realize when you're making an error on field because you're taking so many smaller shots that you can quickly test ideas and see if they're working or not and correct your path instead of having to wait a full hour to see the result. The second thing that I like about this technique is actually you have more control when you get in post-production. So because you're bringing all the pictures on the computer to process them, and I'm going to show you how to do it just in a few minutes, so stick around to see that. Uh, you're going to get a lot more control on how you want to, uh, the star trail to look like at the end. One thing that most people really like about this technique is that you get brighter stars in the end, so you get brighter star trails too. But I don't really like that look because it's a little bit too surrealistic in my opinion. Uh, but this is something, like I said, you can probably correct because you have a lot more control on the computer. Another really, really great thing about this technique is that you can actually create time lapses with the pictures you took for your star trail. So this is great for somebody uh, that wants to create both a time lapse and a star trail, but only want to take the pictures once. This brings me to one of the downsides, and it's this file size that you end up with. So because you're taking so many raw pictures, so we're taking something like 240 raw pictures, you end up with something like 7 to 10 gigabytes of data only for one picture or one time lapse. So this is really a downsize of this um, technique because you're getting so much data for only one picture. Another thing to remember is actually that because your ISO is so high, you're going to be getting so much more noise inside of your shots. 
Now the last thing that's not as great with this technique is that it requires a lot of post-processing and that means you probably need a better computer if you don't want to be passing too much time working on your post-process for these shots. Now let's look at how I edited the shots. So the first one we're going to look at is the one hour exposure that we got in body. And for this one it's very similar to how I edited my sharp stars. So for this one I highly suggest you go check my last video to go uh, more in depth on how I edited these types of shots. But if I quickly go over the settings here, I have my exposure settings where I just bring out a little bit of detail. Then I have an S curve uh, to add some contrast. I bring down the temperature because I like having a blue sky. Um, then I add some noise correction because it was a little bit too noisy and I apply chromatic aberration and lens correction. But just like I said in the last video, the most important part of this edit is actually adding a mask here and then adding um, clarity uh, to bring out the sky. So if I bring it down, we really see here that this really makes uh, the star pop. So that's about it for this edit, really simple to do. Like I said, one big advantage of going with an in-body shot is that it's a lot simpler to process it uh, overall. Now let's talk about how I edit my shots for the photo stack technique. And for this one, we're going to go inside of Lightroom Classic because that's where I have my shots. And if we look at the settings here, we're going to see they're very different compared to the previous shot we just edited. Uh, so I just bring up the exposure a little bit. I bring the contrast up to uh, make separation between the stars and the background. Uh, then I add a little bit of shadows and a little bit of white just to make the stars pop a little bit more. But I don't touch to anything else except adding another um, a layer here, a layer mask, uh, just to add some clarity inside of the stars. Uh, but that's about it for the edit right here. And uh, you don't want to play too much with it because the more you're going to play with it, the more noise you're going to have inside of your shot. And if there's too much wood noise and you stack them together, the noise is just going to start to add up. And if the noise is adding up, it's just going to create a terrible result. So usually when I do a photo stack, I try and keep my edit as simple as possible. So now we can select all the pictures here. We can use the sync mode to sync our settings. I won't do it right now because um, I already did it before. And then we can come inside of the library here and export our shots as JPEGs. Uh, but again, I already did this to save some time and I already have my final shots that are right here. So now to merge the shots together, so we have the 240 uh, pictures right here. You have two main techniques that I usually use. The first one is using Photoshop that I won't show inside of this episode because it's a lot more complex and a lot more time consuming because it's really hard on my computer to process all the shots as layers. So I use here a free uh, program that works on Mac, Windows, uh, that is really great to doing uh, star trails and it's called star, star, star Stacks. So I'm going to put a link down below so you can go and download it. It's free so really uh, if you want to try out it's probably the best way to do it. So for this you're going to select all your shots here. You're going to drag them inside of the program right here. It's going to take a second for the program to import them. And now that we have the pictures here, we can actually see a preview right here. And we have our different options on the side. So usually the one you want to use is either lighting or gap filling. Gap filling is better because we're going to be able to uh, reduce the gaps when we create the star trail. So this is a really cool mode that is integrated inside of this program. Um, I won't be using comet mode because I don't like it. It's kind of surrealistic, the look that it gives to the picture. And the other options are not very useful for what we're doing right now. Now for the image setting here, uh, you don't have to touch it. It's simply like the background here of your image. So that's not really useful. And usually you can use compression. I don't mind using a little bit of compression and that, but I just leave it to the best setting to not get too much detail out of the shots. And here it's just your normal setting. So for now, we don't have to touch anything. Uh, but now we're going to come up here and we're going to click this button right here that is going to allow us to start processing uh, the shot. So we're going to sit down here, a little bar is going to start uh, working and I'm going to speed up this process so you can see, but we're going to start to see uh, the pictures uh, creating uh, star trails inside of the shot here. So we know it's working, but it's a pretty long process. That's going to take about like 20 minutes to create the final shot. So I'm just going to speed it up and uh, get right into the pictures. So once you're done, you want to come up and click on this little icon here and save the image. Uh, so I stopped the process so I have an error message, but once it's done, it's going to save the image here. So if we open it right now, we're going to see there's actually a few problems inside of the shots. 
So if you look at this shot, the few problems I have with it is first of all, I find the star trail just to be way too intense. Like there's way too many stars here that are being taken up. And also in the foreground here, we have some red that because of the light I was using. And also there's too much noise inside of the shadows here. So I don't really like that. So we're gonna go back inside of Lightroom to fix all of this. So if we come back on our picture here, we're gonna go back into the develop module. And if we apply the settings I had at the end here and we look at the difference, you're gonna see it's a lot darker now. So the big difference here is I brought the highlights down completely. And then I went inside of the masks here. And if I select the top mask, um, if we select it here, we're gonna see I bring the contrast a lot. So this is really gonna separate only the brighter stars that are gonna appear. And I brought down um, the clarity uh, really down so we don't have as much stars showing up because I only want to have lines for the bright stars not every single star in the shot because it was just too much so if we export these pictures again we're going to come back here and I have them right here already exported I'm going to remove first of all the pictures I had inside of uh, star stack then I'm going to select all of these shots and I'm going to import them right here So now we're ready to process them. So we're gonna click again on the button here to start processing them. While we're waiting for the shot to be finished, I forgot to talk about what I did with uh, the shots that had red inside of the foreground. So I actually just went inside of Lightroom here, uh, went inside of the library and found the shots here that had some red. So if you look at this one here, we can clearly see there's a lot of red in the foreground. So I simply uh, rejected this shot and I had 10 of them inside of the whole uh, photo shoot. So I just went in and removed all of them. And because it's only 10 shots out of 240, it actually didn't affect the final result at all. Uh, but if you have too many uh, that were consecutive that have the problem, uh, it might cause, cause a problem in the end. So just be sure when you're taking the shot, they don't have something like that, a light that comes inside of the shot. So the stacking finally completed and we have our final shot that's looking like right here. And we can see that on the side because we selected um, the gap fill blending method here, we have an option on the side right here that appeared and allows us to change how the fill is actually gonna happen. So if we zoom in inside of the shot here, so we're gonna go in one, we actually see that there's little lines here and they're not fully uh, completed. So this is a little bit of a problem that we have. So we can come here and show the threshold. And now we wanna play with it and make sure that the, only the lines uh, of the stars are selected. So here we see we have a lot of better result here. And then we can use the gap filling mode here uh, to play a little bit and fill inside uh, the missing gaps here uh, of the light. So if we come back out here, and we remove the overlay, we're gonna see we get a better result. So once this is done, we have our final shot here, so we can actually uh, export it here by saving it. Um, so I'm actually just gonna save it on the desktop. And here, I have the final shot right here. So if we look at this one right here, um, we're gonna see weird lines inside the, the foreground. So there's a last step I'm gonna do for this shot. And that's because just with really long exposure, you sometimes get these weird uh, results uh, stacking the pictures together. Uh, but it's not a big deal. We're actually just gonna use another shot and go inside of Photoshop here. So I took a longer exposure for the foreground here. And if we look, I simply stacked um, the foreground uh, here on top of the inner one, so we have uh, a nice foreground with more detail inside of it. So this is how you can fix your result. If you're interested in learning more about how to use Photoshop uh, to do these kinds of shots, so for example, if you want to change the foreground, uh, if you want to create the whole photo stack inside of uh, Photoshop, and one reason to do this is, for example, inside of this shot I have right here, you can see the lines here that are created by planes passing by. You can actually remove them inside of Photoshop quite easily. So let me know in the comments below if it's in a video that interests you and that I should be making in the future. I hope this video was useful and that you learned how to create star trails. If you did, please leave a like below to let me know you appreciated the video. Comment below if you have any question on the subject and consider subscribing if you wanna learn more about astrophotography because I'm gonna have more episodes on this. The next one is about uh, creating time lapses. And if you wanna learn more just in general about photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one, bye-bye.